In this video, I'm going to deal about how to get rid of Jello effect in GoPro when you're using it on FPV. When you're using it on the FPV, sometimes because of the vibration, there can be a Jello effect. And people try to use GoPro because uh, normally the FPV camera has much narrower view, while the GoPro has really, really wide view. So I bought GoPro 6 and I bought this mount for GoPro 6. And this is how it looks like. It's look the camera is located at the front part because at the back part there's a GPS re a receiver. But look what it happened. I mean, it was like wobbling like this, and we call this jello effect. Jello effect happens in these kind of GoPro cameras. Uh, so I try to find out what was the reason, but it was very, very mounted well, but still it was wobbling like this. So I was asking to a lot of people, do you know what's the reason? And some one friend told me that try to use this small rig a DJI FPV uh, mount, which really holds the GoPro hard. But when you try to push this, you can see the elasticity and then it moves a little back and forth and that causes this wobbling. So the solution is very simple. Just when you buy GoPro, there's a head mount with a head strap on it. So get rid of that head strap and then just put it there like that. Actually, this was what I bought in the first place. It was 3D printed plastic and you can bind it to your FPV like this. Point 0.1, point 0.2 and point 0.3. So that holds very, very well, and it does not move at all, but never buy this mount because because of that elasticity, elasticity, it moves back and forth, and that makes wobbles. I didn't know, I don't know why did it, they didn't test it and just sell it like that. It's a piece of crap. I really hate it. It's a waste of money, and it's really bad. So never use this. Try to make something like that. So... Okay, I stuck it there with the, th I put it there because I didn't want to uh, block the GPS. So it's uh, located, the camera is located at the front and it does not block the GPS. And when I stuck it, uh, I stick it there with this red 3M uh, adhesive t uh, tape and then it holds really, really strongly. So it's very stable and put it on the raw material, the raw plastic itself. And then if you stick it there, it's very strong. It's going to hold it very tight. Uh, the reason why the wobbling effect goes away is because this 3M tape is very, it has a cushion. It absorbs the vibrations and it has a very strong ad adhesive and it holds very hard. And this strong attachment and reducing this vibration, these two issues is the most important point to get rid of the wobble effect, the jello effect. And I was curious about how do you match the angle with the DJI FPV's camera and the GoPro's angles camera. So this is what you do. First, okay, you, you have to change it to normal mode. Okay, let's, you can press this button to change it to normal mode. And then try to look into your goggle. And when you see the, your goggle, you can adjust the angles of the camera in normal mode. Normal mode means you have to put it on the flat surface. So that 25 degrees means the camera is angled 25 degrees from the flat surface. While it's flying. So put it on a flat surface and you can see that the camera is looking a little bit upward, which is going to be like 25 degrees. And you can see those kind of angle. And then try to put this GoPro's camera parallel to the angle of that 25 degree, which means your GoPro is also 25 degrees. And maybe it could be 30 degrees or 40 degrees. It matters uh, if you try to go faster, you're going to put in a 40 degrees. But please note that though it's parallel, just a little bit tilted, a little bit more to the forward. So it could be pointing to the same point. So tilt it a little bit more. And then when you're flying in manual mode, input the same degree, uh, the angle, like if it was 25 degrees. In manual mode, just type in 25 degrees, and then it's going to memory for the next time. So when you turn it on next time, the manual mode camera is going to be, it's a separate uh, angle from the normal angle. So it's going to memorize the angle. So once you set for the first time, then that's it. 
And how to set the ND filter GoPro settings? Uh, a lot of people ask. So the reason why we're using ND filter is because of this uh, motion blur uh, at the edge of this uh, movie in a cinematic fight. Well, you can see this here. Like the, it's motion blurred at the uh, at the boundaries, which makes it feels like you're moving faster and it gives more natural feeling. So that's what you do. So take this lens, the original lens out, and then, and people ask a lot of question about what number ND filter do I have to buy? Do I have to buy ND8 or ND16, ND32? But I recommend you just to buy for a universal use, just buy ND8. Uh, you can fly ND8 spout, like you can fly it at like four o'clock, I mean, four o'clock PM, or at the morning times when the sunlight is not that strong, you can use this uh, ND8. But not in the like twelve o'clock in the lunchtime, and that's not gonna be uh, right. So the settings you have to put it four K four four by three ratio, and then because you're gonna crop it while you're while you're like uh, doing in real steady or good gyro flow, and then FPS for frame per second thirty, and then for the shutter speed you can times two, which is like uh, one to sixties, or but it depends. You can do it like one to 120s if you want to and then ISO is going to be minimum is going to be 100 maximum is going to be 400 uh, uh, white balance is going to be auto sharpness is going to be medium and then try to put it in a flat color instead of GoPro because it's going to be more easy to adjust the colors and by yourself in like Premiere Pro or Final Cut so just try to put it in a flat and you have to turn off the video stabilization and then you have to turn off the auto low light manual audio control just turn it everything off and that's it that's how you set the gopro and let's try to watch the video that was taken by this gopro here we go that's all for the settings Okay, let's try to see the final output. This was the video taken by GoPro. And then a lot of people ask me, how's the battery life? Yes, it reduces like one to two more minutes because you're putting a little bit heavier uh, camera on it. And the DJI PB, I didn't felt any, some, I didn't feel any like that much difference in flying. But yeah, because of the white, it, I didn't feel any difference. And somebody was asking, what about when you like turn a big circle or when you do a split like those kind of skills were there any like differences because of the weight because the weight balance is going to be different but i didn't feel that much difference and there is an air resistance so that makes uh you feel a little bit flying a little bit slower so you can just adjust the angles if you're using like 25 degrees just try to make it to like 40 degrees then it's going to fly faster but instead of that, I didn't feel that much difference. But it gave more flexibility, more more views, and more smoothness in the video. So from the next time, I don't think I'm going to use the original DJI FPB's camera. Something bad about DJI FPB's camera is that it does not have gyro info. Instead, uh, GoPro and like Insta360, they have this kind of a GPS not not only the gps but it also has gyro info recorded together so that with that gyro info the like programs called like gyro flow or like real steady can adjust those kind of movements dirty movements and make it to really really smooth movements you're looking like right now so when dji fpv2 comes out when it's launched i hope it has the gyro info then that's going to be very very powerful uh, and it's going to kill GoPro for sure. I'm not going to put GoPro on it if it has the gyro info and it can fly. I can adjust the smoothness by these kind of gyro flow, flow programs. And try to use the balanced propellers because the different, the bad propeller is going to give you vibrations, which are going to cause you jello effect, the wobble effect. <clears throat> And the GPS is really important, so try to mount it at the front part so it could function very well when the return to home RTH mode. 